Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I take one of these very old heaters, this one's extremely old, around 50 years, and replace the thermal coupling in it and set it up to get it fired back up for normal use and what kind of valve it uses. You can see a link where I got this one at. I always put a link for you guys if y'all want to go get it. Or you can go in there and just look at the specs, read the reviews, see if it's what you want. That's a White Rogers. I prefer using that brand. Don't have any failures on them. So this is a big old Coleman. Let's get started and start tearing it apart and get this thermal coupler put in. We're gonna kinda of go through this and I'm gonna show you this one and I've got some more valves that I'm gonna be installing. I recovered this from an old RV and it's quite big. You can see by that propane bottle there, it's quite a big unit. This one here is a 25,000 BTU furnace. Now it's dirty and that's kind of common condition you're gonna find these in. This one came out of a 1969 New Way Traveler um, camp model mobile home travel trailer and we hooked it up and here for you guys who don't know this is my very unique little little valve setup here for testing these and it is the kind that fits on top of it's a regulator that fits on top of the standard little one pound cylinders so i can carry it around with me and i hook it up common three eighths to these furnaces and test them out. Now this one here, once it was tested out, this furnace has a snap acting valve on it. It's a hydraulic snap acting valve. So let me put that light over there a little bit. And what it has is it has a standard standing pilot light and it has a spring loaded valve right here. And the bulb has a liquid in it that puts pressure against the valve's diaphragm in here. So when you adjust this, like the old Williams and Burn uh, and Benson furnaces, um, you adjust this to a different temperature setting, the draft of air comes in and it controls the heat by fluid control. So your hydraulic fluid control pushes on the valve and closes or opens it depending on the temperature you set this for. And they're, and they're fairly accurate within three to four degrees. So they're very handy. A lot of old school furnaces have these in it. Now, you look at this and you see it's got rust on it, but you can see by the thickness of that plate how thick it is. And I'll hold this up here. You see that. That is a very good solid eighth inch metal. And this big burn chamber here, heat exchanger, you see this real nice fins on it. Well, I'm going to sandblast this cabinet, clean it up, get it all prepared, and we're going to put this old Coleman back into service for a tiny home heater unit. Now I build tiny homes. Um, usually I build a 14 by 26 because that's what I'm legally allowed to haul with my trailer and, and class A license uh, and standard permits. And this old collector here is going to go back into service. These will last a massive amount of time. So this furnace, other than having Emma back here hiding, has a fresh air intake and as center exhaust, which preheats the air going in and exhaust out. We have all the external parts for that too. So we're going to do that. Now over here, I have another one. It's just recently been fixed and I rebuilt the valve inside of it and it's currently on and working. As you can see up inside there, and this one is from a 1963 Shasta. It is a dual therm right there. So we clean these up. The heat chambers are very durable. The flame doesn't actually hit the heat chamber. They do have some diverting metal inside to concentrate the heat, some baffling. And there's another one here. And I've ordered a brand new valve for this one because this one here is shot and I'll be doing a video on that so stay tuned and be watching for the videos. This one right here has got a bad thermal coupler. So what I've done is it's a typical 3 8 wrench. We'll take these loose and you can see by looking at it that it's in pretty bad shape. So we're replacing the thermal coupler. 
You'll remove your thermal coupler, pretty simple. Make sure your, all your gas is disconnected. And you'll remove it just with a standard wrench and pull it off. Do not use channel locks or pliers on them because you'll damage it. Um, you'll also round it off. So most all of them, about 90% of them, will just use a standard 3 8 wrench. Now the ones that are metric will be 10 millimeter. And in this one's case, it's all standard because this thing is about 50 years old. So, all right, now you just follow the same process of removal as installation. Now, the way a thermal coupler works is it uses a temperature transference that just sends it to this little device right here that up against the same thing, a very small version of this hydraulic bulb is inside the valve and if it isn't heated by the pilot light what will happen is it won't allow the gas to come on so that you, your house or whatever don't fill up full of gas so it's just what this is is just a this thermal coupler takes is coupling the thermal heat back to the valve so you'll feel that at the valve when it's running and it's going to be about 150 degrees but that little hydraulic will heat up and move over a little bit allowing the full flow of gas pressure to go through when it activates to heat. Now we're going to hook this one up and I'm going to bend it to mimic the one that's sitting there right there and then get it installed and I'll show you the fire up procedure. All right now I have bent this to sort of mimic this. Now I've got here an 18 inch as you can see right here an 18 inch and this one here was a stock 20 inch now it doesn't generally matter what the size of the one you're putting in um, but it does have a little bit of an effect on if the valve is kind of old now this valve's kind of old so this is a typical white rogers style valve and what i've got here is a white rogers over here now this valve is manufactured by a robert shaw valve or unitrol valve and this one here would be the Unitrol White Rogers valve. So um, I'm gonna show you putting this in. Now, the big thing about putting these in is you wanna make sure that your capillary tube, which is this copper tube here, doesn't touch other materials or metals because it can heat sink itself cooler and shut your, shut your pilot light off. So this one will go up in here right into Let's see if I can get you a picture of it here. Right into, underneath the gas valve, you see that small threaded opening right there, right down in here. So we're going to go into that, and your location of your thermal coupler might be different, but just track it back from where your pilot light's at, and install it. So let's get this one installed, and we'll do a fire up. All right, so now we have the thermal coupler installed, and you can see that the tubing for it is not touching anything at all. We want to keep it completely free. I checked for leaks on all of this, make sure we didn't have any leaks on the fuel supply for the pilot. And now we have a lit pilot and an installed thermal coupler right there. And the flame is just touching the top of it. As you can see, that keeps the flame on through a capillary heat action effect down here. So it's sending its temperature down here to be sensed and keep the flame on for the pilot. Now the way this furnace works as I mentioned is a snap action hydraulic off the bulb and we'll kick up the heat and there it's burning. So it's an old beast but these are very good their heat exchangers are very thick and I went ahead and took my camera and looked inside. I have one of the little boroscope cameras and there's no scale or any damage inside. So later I'll replace this with a new valve and I'll do a video on that as well as the other one that I'm doing valves on. But you can see here, watch, I'll turn this one down and the fire goes off. Back on, fire comes on. This is a very unique, very old style valve using hydraulics. So if you want to watch later videos and find out anything else about servicing these heaters, pay attention. I'm going to be doing a lot of them this winter on different heaters. All right, guys, y'all be good. And if you need a very good quality one, 
that right there, White Rogers. And make sure you get one that's close as possible to the length of your thermal coupler. So you want to kind of roughly measure it. You could be within two or three inches and be fine. But there you go. All right.